Welcome back to learning. Okay, so we're going to pick up with the physics part of physical science, motion. If you have not already done so, please print out a copy of the guided notes for this. And so you can follow along and write as we go. And um, if you can't do that, understand, just get a piece of paper and start writing. Okay, here we go. So motion is not the definition, that's the title slide. Get you moving. Definition of motion is this. Motion happens when an object changes its position relative to a reference point. I'm going to pause and let you... Well, actually, you're going to pause. Go ahead and pause the video and write that down. I'll wait. Okay, hopefully you pause it and have written that down. Um, this sentence doesn't make much sense unless you know what a reference point is. So let me define a reference point on the next slide. A reference point is a point in space used as a guide to measure distances and describe motion. You can pause the video again, write that down, and then you pick it up. I'll be done with my coffee, and we can talk about this. <sighs> Welcome back. So, uh, let me give you an example of this. Uh, let's say you're on that strip of Highway 117 South, going from the fairgrounds down to Mount Olive. And you're going, let's say it's a 55 mile an hour road, so you're probably going 70 miles an hour, knowing you kids. So, if we take a tree on the side of the road and make that our reference point. From that point, that means you're describing all motion from the point of view of that tree. So the Earth is sitting still. You're going south, 70 miles an hour. Life is good. Let's define you as the reference point. If you're the reference point, that means we assume all motion is relative to you. That means we assume you're sitting still. You're not, are you? No, but we assume you are. So how does that change our description of the exact same motion? Well, in that point, or in that point of view, you're sitting still, the car is sitting still, and the earth, the road, the tree, and everything else is moving past you northwards at 70 miles an hour. Doesn't make much sense, does it? So it really matters what you choose to be your reference point. It changes everything when you change reference point. For the sakes of making our lives easier in the future, anytime I talk about motion in this class, I'm going to assume the Earth is our reference point. That can still cause problems, though. Think about the sun. From the point of view of the Earth, the sun is going around us. It rises in the east and sets in the west. We know that's not what's happening. We know the Earth is actually spinning on its axis. But oh well. We have to have a reference point. So, let's define distance and displacement. Distance is how much ground a moving object covers. Doesn't matter what direction it goes, how many turns it takes. An example would be the Indianapolis 500. Those cars go 500 miles in one race. I mean, if I remember right, the track is one mile long total, so they go 500 times around the track. Pretty fast speeds. They cover a huge amount of distance. They don't go anywhere, but they cover a huge amount of distance. Doesn't matter that they don't go anywhere. They've covered distance. They've covered ground. Does that make sense? So when you start thinking, well, they didn't go anywhere, how do we me how do we measure the fact that they didn't go anywhere? That brings us to displacement. Displacement is how far you are from your starting point and in what direction. So in that race, their displacement at the end of the race, when they get the checkered flag, is zero. They haven't gone anywhere. Distance was 500 miles. Displacement was zero. Distance is how much ground you cover. Doesn't matter if you cover it five, six hundred times. How much ground you cover. Displacement is how far you are from where you started. Let's do some examples here. So pause me. Draw this down here. And I'm gonna drink my coffee. And when you're done drawing it, come back to me, unpause me, and we'll go over two questions with this. All right, here we go. So you got your friend's house here, two blocks away to other friend's house, three blocks away to the convenience store. Let's read the problems. Problem one, if you start out at your friend's house, walk five blocks to the convenience store, then walk three blocks back to your other friend's house. What distance did you walk and what is your displacement? So pause me again, figure those two questions out, give me two answers. You don't have to write the problem, just give me the answers. And when you come back, I'll tell you the answers. Okay, hopefully you're back. Uh, so if you walk five blocks, then you walk three more blocks. Five plus three is eight, so your distance is eight blocks. What's your displacement? 
I started off at your friend's house, ended up at the other friend's house. Those two are two blocks apart. This basement also has direction to it, so you started at friend's house, ended up at other friend's house. That's a displacement of two blocks to the right. Alrighty, problem two. Read it. I'll read it to you. Pause. Give me the answers. Come back. See if you're right. If you start at your friend's house, walk the five blocks to the convenience store, then walk all the way back to the same friend's house. What is your distance and what is your displacement? Okay, so hopefully you figured it out. and didn't just wait for me to tell you. If you walk five blocks and then five more blocks, that's a 10 block distance. Your displacement, though, has to be zero. You ended up back where you started. All right, next thing we got to talk about is speed. Speed is defined as how much distance that is covered in a certain amount of time. Pretty straightforward. Doesn't depend on direction. Doesn't matter if you turn. Doesn't matter if you turn around. It's just how much distance you cover, how much ground you covered in a certain amount of time. The equation for speed is distance divided by time. Take a moment, pause, add that to your reference tables. If you don't have reference tables, write it down somewhere else. All right. Here we go to the next thing. There's two different kinds of speed you got to worry about. See, everything doesn't always move at the same speed at the same time. On a real trip, you have stoplights, you have stop signs, you have speed zones, you have people who are going to pass you and cut you off. You're going to have all kinds of things that make you change your speed. All right. So how do I figure out my speed for a trip, say from here to Raleigh? You know Raleigh's about 50 miles away from Goldsboro, give or take. And it takes roughly an hour to get there. It depends on what part of Goldsboro you're leaving from, what part of Raleigh. But whatever, it's about an hour. So your average speed is total distance divided by total time. There's a definition for you. The total distance, 50 miles, divided by the total time, one hour, is 50 miles per hour. No point during that trip did your speedometer say you're going 50 miles an hour for any amount of time. So what's my speedometer showing me? This right here, instantaneous speed. How fast you're going at any one moment in time. What your speedometer shows you. All right. So average speed is total distance divided by total time. Instantaneous speed is what your speedometer shows you at any one moment in time. Your one instant. All righty. The next thing is velocity. Velocity is speed plus direction. Or displacement divided by time. I'm not going to dwell too much on velocity here. If I had you in my classroom with me, I could go into all kinds of differences between the two. I'm not going to sweat it this time. Um, we're just going to assume from here on out, unless I say otherwise, that if I'm asking for velocity, you can use the speed equation and be just as correct. All right? But technically, it's displacement over time, not distance over time. Okay? All right. That ends the first slideshow. Y'all go ahead and work on those um, worksheets I have for you. You can either print them out and work them out, or you can just work out on a piece of paper. If you can't print, I understand. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.